Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Flint First. If you guys could stand with us, we'll get started with our service this morning. so thankful we to meet with you to have our lives touched by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. We need you, and indeed, you are beautiful. Thank you, God. Bless your people this day, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, if you will, please. Um, just some things. Uh, make sure you uh, take a look at the... Um, updates, the different things that are taking place. And uh, I want to mention, of course, that February is Stewardship Focus Month, and we'll be doing a series of messages on that. Also, the food bank distribution is this coming Saturday, uh, February 9th, from uh, 10 to 11.30. And it, uh, you have notes to that effect. I believe you have a flyer as well that describes what needs to uh, needs to be done uh, with that. So, I don't think there's anything else. Did you have anything at all that you wanted to mention? Okay, yeah, well, he was going to wait on that, because I'll take care of that there. Uh, Pastor Frank, is he gone right now? Oh. He's out. Uh, did you want to just give a little boost to your uh, discipleship uh, things that are coming up, or that started, Impact started today, didn't it? I have to. All right. 
Uh, we started Christianity 101 and 201, those rounds of those two classes again today. Hope you will take advantage of that. It will really be helpful in your life as you're growing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Very good. Thank you, Frank. You know, Bruce, I changed my mind. Come up here a minute, will you please? And it's Sunday. Here he comes. He's going to talk. He's our chairman uh, with a stewardship uh, campaign or stewardship focus this month. So come on up and talk about it. There's some microphone around here someplace. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> stewardship is always one of those touchy subjects. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're at, at stewardship or budgeting for a church or a school or a business or your own home finances. Uh, stewardship needs to be talked about. It needs to be discussed. Um, our focus this year, as in our past years, is really about what is God get telling you, not what is the church telling you, but what is God telling you um, to do with your time, your talents, uh, your, your monies, um, to better serve him and to honor him. Um, that's what our focus is about. You're going to see um, in the next four weeks um, uh, testimonies on stage, countdowns that you saw earlier uh, involving time, talents, money. Um, you're going to see video clips dealing with the same. Um, and really what the focus is all about is it's not what we need as a church. It, it has nothing to do with that. It's really what, what God tells us to do with our, with our money, with our time, and with our talents. So over the next four weeks, please, uh, um, if you're not here on a Sunday morning, check our website, watch our videos, watch our sermons, watch our messages, and, uh, and learn what God's telling you to do. Thank you. Talk about stewardship. Um, 
He's been so good to me, I can't praise him enough. Uh, I'm so thankful for my Christian heritage, being my parents came to this church, the old church that is, uh, before I was born. And it's been wonderful being raised in a Christian home. And uh, God knows my thoughts and everything I do each day, he's with me. And last year it seemed like one thing would happen and before we got over it, something else happened. But you know, this year it's going to be good. But the most important thing, mate, I can say is God was with us through all the trials. And he never promised us that every day was going to be sunshine. We will have valleys to go through. But we don't go through them alone. He is with us. God gave me a verse uh, a few years ago. Be still and know that I am God. And you know that has meant so much to me because those are the times, the quiet times when I'm alone with him. I like to be alone, just him and I. I he knows my thoughts, but I still talk to him just like I would talk to Frank or my children. And uh, he's just a wonderful, wonderful friend to me. He means so much and I tell him all the time about uh, how much he lo that I love him. and. There's a song the Booth brothers sing, um, Look for Me at Jesus' Feet. And uh, you know, that is so true. I hope someday that I can be at Jesus' feet. Uh, I know firsthand that prayer changes things. And it's so important when we pray that we know that God is going to answer and sometimes it's not right away but he will answer and uh, the longer I serve my Lord the sweeter he grows that song says that and it's so true <clears throat> my advice to anyone in the church is to pray it's so critical in our life besides studying his word prayer is so important for our day to day living and get involved in the church. A Bible study group is a wonderful way to get to know your church family more. I, I knew the friends in my church, my goodness, for years. But you know, going to Bible study every other week, you get to know them better. And not only that, you learn a lot. And I'm not young anymore, but I've learned a lot just by listening to what their ideas are on certain scriptures and Bible things. And that's what you, we really all need to do that. Now, since this is uh, stewardship month, I'm going to share a couple of things with you. Um, I have always given my tithe to God, even when I was single. And uh, after Frank and I were married, uh, after Johnny was born, it seemed more difficult. And uh, one day I had to share with Frank, honey, if we pay our tithe, we're going to be broke. Well, he said we'd better pray about it. We prayed, but we already knew the answer. Even before we prayed, we knew that we had to give God what was his. Because everything we have is God. And uh, <clears throat> so we prayed, and we knew the answer. A few days later, though, uh, after we had put our money in the tithe, we received the check in the mail. And it stated that we had overpaid on our insurance. We were shocked, but it was great. But that was God supplying our need, you see. We had obeyed him, and he supplied our need. And then another time, <clears throat> we were short, and uh, I hadn't said much to Frank yet, but there I found some money that I had hidden back and put away and forgot about it. Wonderful. So, you see, he's always there. He goes before us and makes a path. We don't, e we don't even realize that, but that's what God does. Um, he supplies all of our needs anyhow. We shouldn't worry because we're his children. So, what we give to God is, uh, I think, stewardship not only is financial, but it's also how we give of ourselves and what we do with what he gives us. And because we are his children, 
God is always faithful. Everything we do for God and his kingdom should be done in love and with cheerful hearts. is talking about the song we're going to sing um, is a combination of several songs but one of them is under his wings you know if we're trusting God for our time for putting our tithe in or any part of our life we are under God's I don't know what to do. I just look unto the hills whence cometh my help. When the dreams I dream have died and I need a place to hide. I just look unto the hills whence cometh my help.
We talked about lighting the candle. If somebody was saved during the week previous, we're going to start this Sunday. And uh, we said if uh, somebody was saved between last Sunday and this Sunday, that we were going to be able to light the candle. We have good news. Carmen Crow has been able to lead Connie Ballard to Jesus Christ this week. And so let's give the Lord a great hand. And uh, this is a great moment. Uh, I'm thrilled to be able to do this. I want to do this every Sunday. Every Sunday. And so uh, we're going to light that candle right now. And we're going to pray for Connie Ballard. That the Lord will be with her as she starts her journey. Starts her journey with Jesus. And all the things that she's going to learn in the days ahead. So let's pray for her now. Lord God, thank you for the life of Connie Ballard. We don't know her, but Carmen does. And it's a friend of Carmen's that she's been able to lead to you. And so God, we rejoice this morning, this day, that indeed Connie is saved for eternity, for the future, forever. She belongs to you now. We pray, God, you would strengthen her in the days ahead, that you would teach her and lead her. And through the discipling process, she comes into a deeper walk with you. All those things, Father. But we ask God together, as your congregation of believers, to bless Connie today with your presence and your power, speaking to her, helping her, and strengthening her. Thank you, God. We give you honor and glory for all that you do. And for the fact that we have come to know you as well. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, let's give the Lord a hand because it's good news. And I, uh, I really hope next week we can do the same thing. So remember, your friends are waiting to hear from you. You can often, you'll say, and you testify. Of course, in front of your friends, you'll say, praise the Lord or God help me. And uh, different things like that. And that's all seed planting, true. But remember this. Someone is ready to hear the question. Do you want Jesus Christ to come into your life, into your heart today? And you'd be surprised how many people will say, yes. Yes, I do. Amen? So be aware and be ready to ask that question.
just ask that uh, if God's leading you and he's just been speaking to you this week, and if you just have some burdens and some things that you've just been sharing with your Lord, then you'd come and, and you'd come to the altar and just lay those at God's feet today. But if you have some praises and you have some things that you just want to thank God for always working in your life, this is a great opportunity to come forward and just thank your Heavenly Father today as well. So if God is leading you, we'd ask that you come forward and you pray with us.
this morning, uh, I just was handed a note uh, about 10 minutes ago uh, that uh, Betty Davis, or Demich, excuse me, Betty Demich, uh, Stan's mother, has fallen this morning and she's been taken to the hospital. She's unconscious and we want to be praying for Betty Demich and uh, that she will be okay. Let's uh, begin with praying with her and then we'll go into the other things that we normally pray about. Lord God, we're glad that we can pray. Uh, we're glad we can talk to you about anything. So Father, here we stand, here we kneel before you, recognizing who you are. and We're coming in the name of Jesus Christ. And Betty Demich has fallen and she's unconscious. Lord God, we pray that you would touch her this morning, that she would waken, and that she will be all right. We pray, God, that you be with the doctors and other team members at the hospital as they're helping Betty. Be with Stan, and Sue, and everyone else, too, that are part of that family today. A pretty scary time, God. So Betty Demons needs you today, Lord. Please be with her. You know, God, we're thankful that we have a Savior. We're thankful we have one who will mold us and make us shape our lives in the way that you have intended. We know, God, that you are the the potter and we are the clay. Father God, it all started with you going to the cross for us and saving us, allowing us to have the joy and the the hope of tomorrow and the real truth about our inheritance and being with you in heaven someday. Such a joy to be your child, to belong to the family of God. We're glad you know us by name, individually, everyone. You've seen those that have come and knelt down here at the altar rail this morning, bringing specific things to you. I ask God. In Jesus' name, that you would meet those needs according to your good grace and mercy. And be with those folks. They seek your face today. They seek your face, God. And we know that you will not turn away from your children who love you and are living for you. We pray, God, that you would guide us individually in our lives every day. There's things we face that are difficult. It's always going to be that way as long as we walk on this earth. So we need you. We truly do. We ask God that you meet the needs of all the individuals standing here today as well. Things that we have to face every day, whether it be at work or school or at home. There might be a need right here this morning for someone's family to be strengthened by your presence and power. We ask God that you would be with mom or dad or both or the children. That you'd bless them and keep them close to you. We know that the home is very important to you, the family. And you are the one, God, who needs to be at the center of our homes. So we thank you for coming and guiding us as families and as individuals. Lord, we pray, too, for those that are suffering because of some illness and that need a special touch from you. It's like Betty. There are different ones here today that, that need your help. This thing with the flu that's going around has been... Uh, Very, very difficult for some of our folks. We pray, God, that you'd help them, protect them, make them well, and strengthen them. Get them through it, Lord. Pray, God, for those that are having economic issues in their lives and they need a a helping hand when it comes to a job, getting a job or getting some other bills met. Lord, God, help them today. For those that are just discouraged because things haven't gone well and things kind of pile up, in people's lives from time to time. It just gets to be too much to handle. And we ask God that that you'd step in and help them with the burden, the difficulties they're facing. But you know, God, we are victorious in Christ and we can always look forward to tomorrow because of you. Lord God, we pray for the church to be really strong in you and to be revived. May the body of Christ be honorable and right in your sight in all things. So if there's any sin here among us that needs forgiveness and those that are willing to say, I'm sorry, God, that you would give them that forgiveness that's needed in their life so they can go forward 
free from the guilt and the pressures of that sin. We need the church to shine like a light in a nation that has gone in the wrong direction and needs you. So God, let us be that light. We desire that. Shine within us. Fill us once again with your spirit, your Holy Spirit. And may we live the life of holiness so that the world can see there is a way that is right in your sight. It's important. We thank you for all the other blessings you've given us every day. Sometimes we always focus on those things we need and we forget about all the things you've already done. So we give you honor and glory for it all. Indeed, Lord, continue to shape us and mold us as we let the potter develop the clay to what you have intended. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here and to give back to you, Lord. As we enter into this time of stewardship uh, focus, we just ask that you would just speak to each, ever, each and every one of us, Lord. Just guide us in what you would have us to do, Lord. Lead us in the way that you would have us to give. We again ask that you would take this offering, Lord, multiply it again and again to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
Now let's add a hooray to that. Let's go. Hooray! Good. <laughs> you guys are great. You put up with it. And in, in, in your mind you're going, oh man, what's he making us do that for? Oh, it's a great day to be here in God's house. I'm glad we were able to light the candle. We've heard some wonderful music today, haven't we? Let's just uh, together praise the Lord for that. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Just so enjoyed. We're going to start with a scripture we've really shared from not too long ago. Several times we seem to come back to it, but it really has to do with with our willingness to to give of our life really to God. And the, the name, if you want to title this sermon, would be called A Life to Give. I would add to that participate, just like some of the things we've seen in that, uh, in that video, taking part in different ways, but uh, a life to give. You know, sometimes people say, I have nothing. I can't do this. I can't do that. I don't have any money. I, what am I going to do? How can I possibly give anything to anyone? And, and let me tell you, God used to uh, one of our people this week with Carmen to give Jesus to somebody and the candles lit because of a gift that was given. And we know it all starts with Jesus. We know that he is the one who gave his life for us so that we could enjoy the benefits that come from being part of the family of God. Forgiveness, the future that's undeniable, a wonderful thing to be able to uh, be able to look ahead to know that we have eternity and we also have God every day helping us, guiding us. I'm going to read this scripture. It's Romans 12, uh, verses 1 and 2. Although we can go on beyond that, we will in some ways today. But this will serve as a a stewardship message that gives an underlying base to what we will be sharing throughout this month. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the written word and the opportunity we have this morning to share from it. Guide us, we pray, that your Holy Spirit be in charge. Every word spoken and received be what you have intended and you alone. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read some things I wrote down in regards to a life to give. I said, giving is living and living is giving. I say, welcome to God's real world. That's the real world from God's perspective. There is no receiving without giving. Giving is the catalyst, the starting point for anything good. So if we are to experience the good in life, we have to build our life through the giving of our life. Again, giving is living and living is giving. 
very important for us to begin there, to know that giving is vital, it's important. Second thing we'd say in introduction is this, giving brings real stability to our lives. It brings stability to our lives. Have you ever walked on the, uh, across the uh, Mackinac Bridge on Labor Day? Who's done that? Anybody here? A few of you have? We, uh, we, used, to, uh, we, used, to, we used to do that because we lived up there. And so our family would come up and we would make the trek across the bridge. And uh, that's quite a massive structure. It's a huge thing. I, I'm amazed by it. For years we, uh, we had the Straits Area Resort Ministry cruises, Vesper cruises on Sunday night. And soon I would take out hundreds and hundreds of people and go out beneath that uh, bridge. And we'd have all kinds of facts about it and things. But, but when you walk on that bridge, it's a whole other experience because as strong as it looks, this thing is called the Mighty Mac. As strong as it looks, it moves. And uh, if you, on those Labor Day walks, occasionally it'll be kind of a cool, blustery day. A little breeze, you might say, moving down through the straits. And you think something's wrong with you because you start to sway a little bit. See? And one time, I remember, it was swaying quite a bit. Do you know that main deck is built and designed to sway 35 feet to the west or the east from where it is? Did you know that? Without coming apart. And at the top of the towers, at any given time, at the top of those towers, which are very tall, it'll move six feet either way like this or like this. It's amazing. It's, and when you're walking on it, you really think something's wrong. And, and then I thought, what's wrong with me? And I was coming near the point where you see the, the deck come together with another part of the bridge. There's like teeth. And they're, they're quite a, there's quite a gap. And as I was standing there, it was going like this. See? And I thought, man, this thing is wild. But you see, with the Mackinac Bridge, as huge as it is, in order to be stable, in order to stay strong, it has to be willing to give. Now, I know that's a little different than what we're talking about in regards to giving of what we have in our life. But the point is, stability comes through giving. Stability comes through giving. And sometimes, you you know, I know not everybody, you know, in fact, when we, we lived up there, at, if the wind hit 70 miles an hour, you, no trucks were allowed to cross it because you might get blown off the thing. And once it starts to go like this, the trucks start to go like this. And they have to like go across, I forget what, very, very slow pace and be escorted across a, a little later on. They're very careful about it. But see, uh, it, is, it is essential that there is this attitude of giving in our life if we're going to experience true stability. Sometimes people think the way to achieve stability is to hold on to everything that you have and don't give that, whatever it might be, to anyone else. Well, that brings about a certain level of paranoia, I think. And there's an important issue there because if, if we're not able to participate from giving, that we mistaken that for stability when in fact it makes us extremely unstable. Because again, if we go back to the first thing I said in introduction, it was giving is living and living is giving. And that's welcoming us to God's real world. It's all about giving. It is the starting point. It's the catalyst for everything that is good. Now, some of you might be holding on to your wallet as I'm speaking. But as Bruce had said, it's not just about your wallet. And as the video clip said, it's not just about one thing or another. It's about your entire life and my entire life. And it is about the will of God. In discussing this stewardship campaign, if you want to call it that, or stewardship month, uh, Bruce made the point, it's not about the church, the organization, you are the church, but the organization, you no know, part of the church, telling you what's needed. It's saying, what is God telling you to do in regards to participation? Uh, this morning, 
uh, the choir did a fine job. But if Pastor Frank and Sue had not participated, there would have been a dead spot there. No, no voices. Participation was important. In fact, they sounded beautiful together. Participation is crucial. And, and, and to hold back, to sit back and say, I'm not going to participate for whatever reason, is a mistake. To say, I'm not going to give of myself to something can be a mistake. And it's important for us to say, I will, or I will certainly try to participate. The third thing in introduction, I would say that giving is the sign of the existence of life. Without giving, there is a deadness and an emptiness. Christ gave his life so that we could live. Without giving, there is no life. You are, in fact, wonderfully made, and you are a wonderfully made gift in and of yourself. Did you know that? You are a gift. Sometimes people will kid around and say, well, I'm not God's gift to this or that. Let me tell you something. You're more of a gift than you realize to others. And God wants us to give of ourselves to others. You're a wonderfully made gift. Welcome to God's real world. Some, some observations I would make uh, in regards to giving would be this. I mentioned the first thing was giving is about participation. What can I do? A factor of what can I do with my life? Uh, uh, what can be done? What would be my part in things? And that's an important question to ask yourself. It really is. At times you might say, well, I want to do this or I want to do that. Or I want to, whatever it might be. It's kind of like having an old clunker and say, I want to, to be in one of those 200 mile an hour races. Well, maybe you're not equipped to do that. But there are things that you're equipped to do. And being able to say, what can I do? What can I do? When you talk about giving your life, and the Bible says, therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. You have something to give. You have you to give. And when you ask the question of how, I can, how can I participate, the answers will come. Because uh, it is true that regardless of what people have said about you or to you, you know some of the things that you're pretty good at. You know some of the things that you could share with someone else. It might be talent. It might be other abilities. It might be awareness of things and, and being able to help people. It might be wisdom. There's all kinds of gifts we have and, and things that God has given us in our life that we can use. It might be money. It might be resources. I don't know. But I know this, that asking the question is important if there's to be an answer. And answers come from the most unexpected places. God wants to use you, and participation is crucial. The second observation I make this morning is that participation equals uh, the good health standard set by God for the human being. Participation is important. It's a good health standard. God expects one person to give to another and to share. He even looked at man when man was created and says, you know what, that guy needs a woman. Some of you guys may be surprised at that. But it's true. God has certain things that he considers good health standards in regards to each other, to care for each other, and to be good company for one another, and not to feel alone. To be able to be together and to give to it. You know what? The body of Christ is a beautiful thing, and it's wonderful to come together as we do today. But you know as well as I do that certain friendships within the, the body of Christ have been a rich source of joy for you, haven't they? Isn't it wonderful to have friends within the church that think the same way you do when it comes to Jesus? That you can visit with and feel that purity that comes from that kind of a relationship. It's a good health standard that's set. 
Participation also meets the need of being needed. No man is an island, that saying says, or a woman for that matter. And, and, and being needed is, is crucial. If you, now, I know, that, uh, uh, I know that some of you have gone through uh, different kinds of, of surgeries and have gone through certain kind of uh, steps to uh, recuperation. Uh, Judy Hendricks just had her arm uh, set because she broke her arm, her wrist. Was it wrist or arm? Just a short wrist? Yeah, just recently. And so this week she had that wrist had to be operated on. I'm telling you, out of school here. But she had to have a metal put in there, a plate, and, and screwed together and that kind of thing. And as time goes on, as that heals, that'll be fine. But one of the things she's going to have to do is exercise that arm after, after it heals up more. Because what happens to the muscles is if it's not used, if they're not used, they begin to, to shrink and they lose strength. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? And in our life, our life, we, we, participation allows us to be needed, to, to be used by something, somebody. Some people say, well, I don't want anybody to bother me. Friend, that one of the worst things you can do is back away and get in that field of not being needed. Everybody needs everyone else. And these things about you that are so important are something that can be used by someone else. Everybody wants to be needed, has to be needed. It also, participation meets the emotional need, the feeling of significance, not just being needed for projects or tasks, but this feeling of significance. I meet a lot of people that don't feel that they're very significant. They're, they're kind of insignificant, unimportant, they would say. They would say, well, I'm not as important as that person or this. Let me tell you, your soul was so important to God that Jesus died for you. You are important to God and you're important to other people. And just because someone made you feel insignificant and kind of pushed you away doesn't mean you really are insignificant. And there's a need to participate so that that, that you can meet that emotional need because after a while you begin to withdraw. And it's a very bad thing for you to do. I, I always feel bad when it comes to people that withdraw, kind of go off by themselves, become a kind of a hermit. There's a lot of people that draw back. Participation is important. And I believe it, it, there's an expectation factor, the God factor again. Welcome to God's real world. God expects us to be part of things. It is an expectation. And even though this person or that might have not treated you right or whatever it might have been or things didn't go the way they should or sorrow came into your life, God is still expects you to participate. He expects you to be part of things. He expects you to be part of the giving process that catalyst that moves things and changes the world and changes lives all around us. God expects it. So as we look at the scripture, we see that, that we've been equipped with things. I mentioned that we would go a little further in this scripture. In the sixth, uh, sixth verse, it says, uh, uh, we have uh, different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do so cheerfully. All those things become helps to others. Opportunities for us to give to someone else according to what God has given us to give and enabled us to do so. The measure of what he has given can be passed on to others. Often it's said that we are to be channels of blessing, the blessings that move from God to other people, a willingness to, to be that channel, that, that highway of, of God's caring, of God's mercy. All those things are there, the prophesying and serving and teaching and encouraging. And it's not just in the certain structure of things. It's about your life, uh, those things flowing through your life every day to other people. 
to being sensitive to the needs of others. And I know that we often equate needs with uh, only those things that we see or today because of economics, we equate it to uh, specifically jobs or money or food, those kind of things. But it goes well beyond that. It really, what we're talking about here is an attitude that we recognize something, that we have been equipped with something that can be given to others. We are equipped and well equipped. As I look at you today, I know for a fact that God has equipped you with something that you can give. Some way that you can participate in the lives of other people and in God's process and in God's work. It's good to know that, isn't it? You can't say as you go away today, say, well, I, I've got nothing to give. You might say, I've got to find out what it is that I've got to give. And I've got to participate because there's expectations that God has of me. And I'm going to do so. Verse 1 in that says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. I believe, in a way, it's a cautious warning to us. That we don't belong to ourselves anymore. You aren't your own boss anymore. When Jesus Christ saved you and you became part of the body of Christ, someone else is in charge. God's in charge. All we're supposed to do is say, yes, Lord. Isn't that something? That's really a difficult one, isn't it? Let's try that on for size. Just say that with me. Yes, Lord. Let's do it again. Just a, Yes, Lord. Let's do it a little louder. I'm sure you can hear, but let's try it anyway. Yes, Lord. It's very important to, for us to know that we look at our life and say, Okay, God, here I am. Use me. Send me. Do with me as you wish. I don't see the value the way you do, God, but according to this, that expectation issue that you're really telling us this is what you want. And this is what we're supposed to do. So in a sense, it's a cautious warning, isn't it? If we put it in reverse saying, please don't step away from the responsibility you have. That actually the giving of your life is a spiritual act of worship to God. We sometimes only think of worship in terms of the music we're singing. Or coming to a worship service. And this indeed is. And it's a precious time today. I said that and I meant it. A wonderful thing to be able to worship God in his sanctuary. But he says, man, I want you to worship me with your life. I want you to know that I want to use you and flow through you. And I've equipped you in a particular way that you are important to my process. And what I want you to do. In a very real sense, he wants to encourage us with this. He's saying, look, you may have a poor self-image. Maybe you think you don't have anything going for you. Or maybe you've had people always dealing negatively in your life. God said, here's the positive truth. Welcome to my real world. You are equipped. You are wonderfully made. There's a lot that you have going for you. And all I want you to say is, yes, Lord. And I will take you and I will use you. And I will mold you like that song we sang this morning, like a clay in the hand of the potter who shapes us. And we look at that. If we were to look in the mirror after God's done, we'd say, isn't it something what God has done in my life? Isn't it something that there was, there was something there that I didn't see, but God saw something in me. All I had to say was, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here I am. I have a life to give. That's what we have to know this morning, is that we have a life to live. There's also a directive, and we see it in verse 2, which says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's amazing. There's a, there's a change that should be taking place. We talk about a soul shift. We talk about the changes that need to happen to our heart and our life. 
Sometimes if we're choking on the statement saying, yes, Lord, or we're scared to say it, or, or maybe there's other things that seem to block the way that we have to look at our life and say, Lord, there has to be a change in me. I want to be able to say yes to you. I want to be able to do what you want me to do. I, I want to believe that, that what you have done is marvelous and wonderful in the creation that you made in me. I, I want to do that. God, will you change me on the inside so we don't know always what needs to be done? Soul shift breaks it into various things that we can deal with. It's very easy to understand. And it's very important for us to let God do the work within us. God's will be done. It goes on further. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, when God gets a hold of us and deals with us on the inside and says, I want your life to be a life of giving to me and giving to others. I want you to have a life that's filled with an attitude of giving. His will will be accomplished. Did you know that? God will get His will done. We pray that, you know, that we want uh, His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, where that starts isn't with our government or with our country, but it starts with us. We want to see change, don't we, in our country. We want to see change in our government. But I believe the change starts with us. I believe that God wants to work in and through us. And I want His will to be done in the United States of America. But I believe that His will has got to be done in, our, in your life and mine. And His will is this, is that we live a life of giving to Him. Total 100% giving back to Him. Saying, here I am. Use me as you see fit. Let your will be done. We see the relationship in verses 4 and 5 uh, that's developed for us. Uh, beautifully put, too. Let me just uh, uh, get to that. Uh, well, I'll, I'll read it from the third verse. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you are, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members uh, do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Amazing. There is truly supposed to be a relationship between you and I within the body of Christ, and with you and I, uh, with, with each other right here today. A, a, a real relationship. Now, we read a different scripture that talks about the unity that we have through the presence of the Holy Spirit. We talk about the unity we have because of the way we believe. But it would amaze you, it would absolutely amaze you if you sat down and really discussed what you believe. And that's why we have the classes with impact talking about what we believe. But you would sit down, you would be amazed at how people think different things. Did you know that? that we all have some different thoughts about some things. We agree about Christ. We agree about that. But there's some differences there, perhaps, in what we think in regards to how life should be lived, what holiness is, what God expects of you and I, or what does it mean when we say to give our life as a living sacrifice to God. There are different opinions of that. But all what it has to do with it, within the relationship of the family and the body of Christ, as we get to know each other better, we help one another, and the body becomes strengthened. If all we do is walk in and out of a building and say hello to each other, I wonder sometimes if that's enough. We have what's called life groups. Life groups are an important part of the church. Some would say, well, I'm just not into a Bible study. Uh, you know, Wanda shared about how important uh, uh, every other week Bible study was in her life and how being able to meet with other believers and, and be able to talk and to learn things one from another. You see, the closer we are together, the more we learn about each other, the more that we get to know about each other. I'm not talking about nosy knowing. I'm talking about knowing that's important to our lives, each and every one of us. You don't, you don't force that. Uh, someone like me, I don't stand up here and say, this is how you're going to socialize. You know, you'll say, right, okay, see you next week, pal. It's not anything like that. 
it's understanding that one of the functions within the body of Christ is for you and I to be close through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, to share together, to teach one another, to strengthen each other, and to encourage one another because life is tough, life is rough. Uh, the temptations that we face, to be able to help each other through difficult times and not to be alone. It also says that we can do something with what we have. We can lead, I call it being able to lead in love with the gifts that we have been